It's time for a direction with Pastor Errol Daniel, sponsored by the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. to the word of God, how do we overcome or what do we overcome through? Okay, some people are whispering, so no, you know what it is. So let's, let's declare it loud. According to the word of God, how do we overcome? By the blood of the lamb and the... So what is our testimony today? Are you really a warrior? 
you really an overcomer? And uh, I just heard we're singing about being soldiers in the army. Are you ready for battle? You know, in the army, soldiers go not really knowing which side would be victorious. But I'm going to ask you to rely on the Bible again. What evidence do you have that in God's army, as you team up with him, that we will be victorious? Any evidence? You need to give me evidence. That's, that's the verse. But who knows where we find it? Let's, let's find some evidence this morning. We need some evidence that when we, when we unite, when we get on board with Christ, because he doesn't get on board with us, all right? When we get on board with him, we are more than conquerors, that we will be victorious. Is there anything in your Bible that assures you of the victory? Like we need to get into our Bible some more. We sang a line a while ago that... Um, we will fight until, or we'll hold up the banner until we die. Let me take you into the book of Psalms. Psalm 118 and verse 17. Somebody knows it, but we're all going to find it. Let's do it together. Because the soldiers today, we're marching together. And we are declaring God's word together. Psalm 118, 118 and verse 17. I think by now most of us would have found it. It's not a long verse, but there are certain things as soldiers we need to declare. Are certain things as soldiers, you need to know that we are on the winning side. Let's declare Psalm 118 aloud together. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the law. So let's say it now with some life. So the devil doesn't think we're already defeated. All right, Psalm 118, verse 17, aloud. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. It's a privilege to know that we've been given that task, that opportunity to declare the works of the Lord. We declare him in everything that we say, everything that we sing, the way in which we live our lives and also by our testimonies where he has brought us from. Is anybody happy they came to service this morning? Amen. I wonder if it's just me. Anybody enjoying the praise so far? Anybody wish we could do some more praising for like another half hour? Give the person next to you a smile. Let them know that you're happy to see them today. They could have been anywhere else, but they've come to the best place ever to be in God's house. Sammy says a day in his courts is so much better, so much better. Anybody smiled at the ushers? Anybody smiled at the musicians? I'm going to ask you to welcome Brother Garfield Joseph. He is the one that will minister today. His wife and his son, they're with us also. He was invited to be this morning's minister preaching, but I saw him on the side being today's dancer. So you have to understand, when we get together in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You know, he's no stranger to us. He worships at our streams of our church out in Korea. And there are some warriors out there. So three of the Korea warriors are with us this morning. His wife and his son. We just give God praise and thanks this morning for he is good. God is good. And all the time. You know, I, I, when I used to be out there in the world, I enjoyed music. But I really wasn't a party goer. Honestly. 
It was never my thing. But music has been something that I've gravitated to a whole lot. And when I hear good music, I can't. I have to just give God what is his. I have to just let go and give my God what is rightfully his. So if you're not used to it, excuse me. Give me room and let me praise my God. Amen. I just want to bring you greetings from the saints of God in Korea. We are happy to be here fellowshipping with you this morning. For we know that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forever. It's always a privilege for me to be here fellowshipping with you, enjoying the presence of God. And let us continue to do so. We look into the word of God as Sister Vickley would read from the word. Pleasant good morning to all this morning. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading from verses 1 to 20. When you find it, say amen. amen. Okay, so we will read response. We alternately, sorry. Um, I'll read the first verse, you will read the second verse, and so forth. Hear, O Lord, oh, sorry, please. All the commandments which I command thee these days shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God is not keeping his command in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee in these days. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fairy, fiery serpents and scorpions and droughts, where there was where there was no water, that brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint. And thou say in thy heart, My power and the might of mine hand had gotten me this wealth. And it shall be, if thou 
do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. Together. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much. You may be seated in God's presence. And after all that reading, my question to you is, will you forget your God? You sure? As a little boy growing up, you may have heard me saying this before. We grew up in a little place called Carapan. And it's not the Carapan village that you know out in Stubbs area. Carapan Mountain. You know what I'm talking about. And all that we knew was banana field, mango trees, breadfruit, coconuts. That's what surrounded us. A little board house, a wooden structure, one bedroom, eight children, two adults. And we lived there for many years. A wooden kitchen on the outside. And no sewage because we have no pipe born water. So the toilet is down the road in a banana field. But today, Brother Garfield is no longer living in that sort of a condition. Many of us would have came from very humble beginnings. Many of us would have had little or nothing. But over the years, God would have blessed us tremendously. And thus we have reasons enough to say, thank you, Jesus. Come thus far. And I find no fault. And we are saying to ourselves, I am going on. We are going on because why? God would have been so good. He has done so much for me. And we just can't tell it all. We just can't. We've listened to the reading of the word this morning. We've listened. Because you read and you listened. And the word of God is simply asking us to do one thing. Remember the Lord thy God. It is our responsibility to remember the Lord our God. And that is the topic this morning. And my theme is, remember not to forget God. Remember not to forget God. And you may ask the question, why should I remember not to forget God? Based on the passage of scripture this morning. There are three reasons we can look at. Number one, because of the journey over which he has brought each and every one of us. Because of the journey over which God would have brought you and I, we have something this morning where we can say, thank you, Jesus. Look at verse 2. Let's go back to verse 2. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart whether thou 
would they keep his commandment or no? I made mention of where I was born. But today I'm no longer living there. You see, sometimes we look at where we came from. And then we put a limit tag on ourselves. And say, I can't go any further. You know why? Because mommy didn't do anything better. Daddy didn't do anything better. So I am stuck in this place of not knowing how to do any better. But I hear the word of God says, that which I would have started in you, I will bring to pass. God will finish what he would have started in you. Mommy didn't get an education. Daddy didn't get an education. But daddy made it through. Mommy made it through. And mommy and daddy made sacrifices. Sent us to school. Sometimes they went hungry. Only to ensure that we are receiving. What they themselves have need for. Or need of. But the journey is worth every moment of it. They are investing in something. That will be beneficial to them somewhere along the line. I remember there were days I went to secondary school, Mountain View Adventist Academy. Not one thing to eat. But never went hungry. Believe you me, Sister Scott. A secondary student going to school, nothing to eat. But never went hungry. You know why? Because God provided avenues to which I will be fed up. Because I knew what was happening at home. So I took no opportunity. I, I didn't take any time out to go and question or ask for anything. Because I knew exactly what would have been coming. So I ran out of the house with everything I needed except something to eat. Good thing is I had breakfast. But I thank God for a lady by the name of Miss Thomas. Don't remember the first name, but Hugh Thomas' mother. She would ask us to assist in selling in the shop because of the number of students that were coming to buy things to eat at lunchtime. And myself and a brother by the name of Rudolph Stalin were the two assistants. Yeah, we give assistance. <laughs> Yeah, we were giving assistance <laughs> to all those children who needed bread and butter. That was lunch. That was lunch at secondary school. A bread and butter. There are some bread about this length. They would cut it in two. And half, I can't remember how much was for half, but I couldn't buy half. Because I had absolutely nothing to buy half, Brother Ian. But after serving in that shop, I got my lunch. I got my bread and butter. And I got my glass of Marby. And I went back to school. And then in the afternoon, I went home. I can't forget the journey over which God has brought me. So I have to be thankful to God. Today my son has choices. I don't want this. I don't want that. I can't handle this. I can't handle the other. They have many choices. I had none. Sometimes going home from primary school, I got roast grindy. I got a slice of breadfruit. And breadfruit and what? Breadfruit. Because there was nothing else to go with it. But God would have kept us. God would have brought us. To a place whereby we can make choices today. Don't forget God. Because it is he who has brought you thus far.
Israel had a journey where they could have looked back and would have seen exactly what God would have done for them. But ever so often, Israel failed to remember the goodness of God, just like many of us today. We complain about what we don't have, but we never appreciate what we have before us. So reason number one, remember the journey over which God would have brought you. The fact that he would have preserved you. The psalmist says in Psalm 103 and verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. All his benefits. Which he has bestowed upon us. Don't forget. The benefits that God would have loaded upon you. Sometimes we complain more than we give thanks. And it pains the heart of God. If it pains us as parents, when we provide so much for our families, and then you hear them complaining, who would not cook good? This not look good. And all the others. It pains our hearts. But think about what God would have done for us. And we are turning our backs. We are looking in another direction. Remember the journey over which God would have brought you and be thankful to him. Find it in your heart to give God thanks and praise. Develop an attitude of gratitude. Because had it not been for God's goodness, none of us would have made it thus far. None of us. Remember not to forget God. Don't forget him. And if every day we look back at where God would have brought us from, we'd have enough reasons to say, hey, I'm going on. Come thus far. Find no fault. I am going on. I am going on. You know, none of my mother's children, not one, is, is living in a wooden house with one room. None. None. Not one. In fact, over the years, so much persons would have lived under our roofs. So much persons would have passed through. And it is because of the goodness of God. You see, when God extends his mercy and his favors upon us, it is our responsibility to do likewise. It's a means of saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But there are persons who like to hold on to everything that God would have blessed them with. It's all mine. It is still mine. And it will always be mine. But here God is saying, hey, you, who give it to you? Okay, then, it is all yours. I take back my breath. What are you going to do with it now? What can you do with it? You see, give thanks. And, uh, and it, give thanks with a grateful heart. Express your gratitude saying, thank you Jesus because I could not have done this without you. Could not have made it without you. Reason number two. Because of his commandments, judgments, and statues. And if we look from verse 11 onward, we're going to recognize exactly what God was simply asking of us as a people. How much do we remember the commands of God towards us? How often do we contemplate on the word of God when going through trials and adversities? How often do we hold fast to the promises of God? How often? How often? Backtrack a bit. Turn back one page. 
And let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We are talking about remembering the commandments of God. Reason why we, why we ought not to forget God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6. All other things being said. Let's look at it from verse 1. I'll just jump a few verses just to understand. Now these are the commandments and statutes and judgments with the Lord, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that he might do them in the land whether he go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. So, reason number one. Why should I remember the commands of God? What are, what are God's commands towards me? One, I need to fear him. Not being frightened when his name is being mentioned. But give reverence to God. Giving reverence to God. Understanding his ability and who he is. Giving our appreciation to him. Giving reverence to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In verse number five, love the Lord. We are to love the God of our salvation. We are to love the Lord with all, all, not some, all our heart, our soul. And our might. Giving to him what is rightfully his. Because he deserves every bit of it. Don't just sing the song. But live it. Live it. Live it. Because after singing it, you know, the apostles are going to look to see whether or not we're going to be active, action oriented. The apostles are going to look tomorrow to see if you are living according to your song. That's one songwriter say, I'm going to live the life I sing about in my song. And hey, I often say to individuals, it doesn't matter if they call you stupid. Because they will, all, they will call you all kinds of things. But if you prove yourself to be stupid, then you have a problem. So you could call me whatever you want. At the end of it, Sister Linley, whose report will you believe? And who has the final say? So really and truly, why I can, what, what are we so concerned about what people have to say? If we are pleasing God, well, do as you please. Understand it. If you are pleasing God... Do as you please. Because what you're doing pleases God. So continue to do it. But if you're doing something and it does not please God. Hey, bricks. Check yourself. Check yourself. Ensure that your life is in alignment with God. And continue. Continue. But if our lives are not in alignment with God, then we have something that we have to really and truly adjust. There's need for an adjustment or some adjustments. So we are encouraged to remember the commands of Almighty God. Remember the words of Almighty God. And it, it is these that will guide us and it is the word of Almighty God that will enable us to receive the strength and whatever else is necessary when we spend time in it, understand it, and allow it to be lived out of our lives on a daily basis. You can't give it if you don't have it. We can't give it if we don't have it. 
So we need to spend time in it. Understand what the God of our salvation says. So whenever questions are being asked, answers could be given. Understand the word. Live according to the word. And not only that, in verse 7 it says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Hey, the command of God is for us as parents to be teachers to our children. Hear this. Me can't go to pick me, you know. Me can't go to pick me. But it is yours. The child is yours. It is our responsibility. We are supposed to be the first responders. Don't send them to school and say, teacher will take care of that. He or she will come back with the same problem or even more. Because they are going to interact with others who have other issues. And they are going to come home now with more. And you have to face that. The word of God says we are to teach our children. And teach our children what? The word of God. Teach them the word of God. So that they will be better equipped. So whenever trials and adversity comes, they can know where to take their stand and how to do it. Because why? He put the light in you. He put the light in you. He put the light in me. And with the light in us now, when darkness presents itself, my brother, hey, we're going to say, hey, hey, hey. Mm -mm. No. 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 My mommy told me this. My mommy told me the other. And I'm going to stand by it. You see, when the light of God is in us, which is really the word of Almighty God, we will make a difference. Wherever we go. But when the word of God is absent. We stand for anything. But we have to stand for something. Otherwise we will fall for everything. And we need to stand upon the promises of God. Stand upon the promises of God. And when we stand on the promises of God. You know, sometimes we are called all kinds of things. But that as I said before. Doesn't mean a thing. Jesus boy. Thank you. Watch you. All let's study at church. Well at the end of the day. I want to hear well done. Amen. Good and faithful servants. So if I am churchy churchy. I am too churchy churchy for you. Then sorry. I will continue being what I am. For the glory of God. Some years ago, one young lady said uh, that I was too dead. She was full of life. And Garfield was dead. And Brother Garfield would have already said to God, I'm talking to you now, S.S. Williams, I'm talking to you, yes. Father, if I commit fornication, kill me dead. Kill me dead. So it doesn't matter what you will do or what you might say. I made a vow to God. If I commit fornication, I'm a dead guy. Doesn't matter how you come or what you might come with. I already made my vow. If I commit fornication, I'm a dead man. Me, a one dead. That was not my plan. I had other plans. So you know what? When you come with your pretty smile, and you come with all that you have, and you call me stupid, then thank you, Jesus. 
And then you say, I am dead. I say, thank you, Jesus. I am dead to sin, but alive to righteousness. When I told one sister some years ago in Antigua what my vow was, you believe she told me, you go dead? You say, you go dead? Sister Scott, I was looking for something different. Something to uplift me. Something to encourage me. But you got dead. But thank God. That which you would have started in me. Still working on me. Still working on me. A work in progress. You see, we can't forget the commands of Almighty God. He said, this body is not my own. But it is the temple of the living God. Therefore, I must keep the temple holy, sanctified for the master's purpose. So I was not going to give in to fornication. The day I got married, I cried. You think I cried because I was sorry of the woman I was marrying? No, don't get me wrong, sister. Your niece is much better than that. I cried because of the journey over which God would have brought me. And the trials and the testings I would have gone through. And I'm still here. But by the grace of God. Remember not to forget God. Because it is he who has brought us thus far. And he will continue to take us on. doesn't matter what you're called. It's what you prove yourself to be. When we stand before God on that great day, I would love to hear, and I know you're going to say amen. I would love to hear, come ye blessed of my father. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear those words, but I must do what need be done here in order for me to hear them. So on the way, whether if you're called stupidly, continue. Continue. Continue living for God. Sister, if they say you're dead, continue being dead to sin and alive to righteousness, man. Because God is good. And he will always be. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God. So reason number two, remember not to forget your God because of his judgments, commandments, and his statutes. Now we could go through chapter six of Deuteronomy in detail. We could go through it in your own spare time and understand exactly what God was simply saying. My final point on, on, on that portion Let's look at verse 6, 17, sorry, of chapter 8. Back to chapter 8, verse 17. Something very important before I go to my final point, my final reason. Let's look at verse 17. As a matter of fact, I go back to 16, so we could understand it a bit more. Who fed thee? In the wilderness with manna, which thy father knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at the latter end. And thou say in thine heart, hear this, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. Remember not to forget God. Why? Because it is he who has given thee power to get wealth. The sleepless nights. The sacrifices. They are not all to it. Because hey, you could have studied all night. All week. All month. 
all year. And when you hit that exam room and you sit there, your memory would have gone. Everything taken away. Lindley, tell me how successful you would have been at your exam then. You see, if God never put it back there. If God never put it back there. If God never put it back there. Then what will you say? Oh, my ability. <laughs> no, it is God. Oh, the sacrifices I would have made. And the, the, the support that I received from parents, friends, and loved ones. Hey, if it is not for God, none of us would have achieved the things we've achieved today. It is he who has given us the power to get wealth. Prosperity sometimes causes persons to turn away from God. And that is why I started where I came from. Where we came from. Banana field. Yes, when we step out of the house, Sister Ina. I can't and have bananas and all the other trees you, can, trees you can think about. And over the years, God would have moved us from there. You know, as growing up as a young man, I never had it in mind to work with CWC. CWC was never on my agenda. Growing up as a young man, all my mind was on agriculture. And today, I still love the lands. I enjoy working the lands. In fact, I would wake up one morning and just decide today I'm going to dig a piece of land. And I'm going to plant it one time. And that we did yesterday. We just woke up and we decided, hey, cultivation. And we can plant one time. And before you knew it, we got help. And it was done. You know why? Because you have to eat. I love that agriculture, and the construction. And those were the fields that I got into very early. But while I was in Beckway back in 2003, working hard, God had other plans for me. One day a call came. There's an opening in Majaka. Make the application. And you see, when, when, when our lives are in the hands of God, God put things in place. And he puts persons in positions who will help us. You see, God orchestrates everything for our benefit. And sometimes when we look back, Sister Scott, we say, oh, I, I, had it not been for me. And the sacrifice I would have made. Hey, it is God who has given you the power to get wealth. So give God thanks for it. Whatever comes to whatever means, God allowed it. Don't forget that it is God who would have given you all that you have. Because, hey, the breath that you breathe, it is just being loaned. It has been loaned to us. So give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Prosperity could lead to us forgetting God. So be mindful that it is God who would have given you and me and all of us the power to get wealth. Don't forget God. Don't forget him. The last reason well, we should remember the Lord our God. Because it is God who gave us that power. Because of the power that he has given unto us to gain wealth, we must be mindful of him at all times. And be thankful. Be thankful. And we are seeing that in verse 18. Be thankful to God for that which he has blessed us with. Parents who had not much, but sacrificed so much for us to have what we have now. 
individuals who contributed to our development and upbringing. Because God put it in place. When we had nothing to eat, putting persons in the right place so that he can take care of us. So give God thanks. Give God thanks. Don't praise yourself for any of it. But praise God for all of it. Don't tap yourself on your shoulder and say, Thank you, Jesus. I come from a good family. Hey, it is God and God alone. It is God. There are some persons who came from families with names. We have my building in St. Mason High enough to put them up to. But some of those children that he never had time with. Some of those children that he never say are mine, but he knew for a fact. Many of them are very unfortunate today. And there are individuals who are very educated, highly educated, who walk in our streets. And sometimes we shake our heads. Hey, it is because of God's goodness why we are not out there as well. Remember not to forget God. It is he who has given us the power to get wealth. So be thankful. And in closing, if we forget God, you could be mindful that there are going to be some serious consequences. Had I gone back on my vow, you think you would have been seeing me here this morning, sis? That red boy for listening would have been gone. Because I've made a vow. And hear the word of Almighty God. Let's read it. I don't want to say it. That you might think it's me saying so. Verse 19 says, And it shall be, if thou art all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that he shall surely no, no, no two ways about it. If you and I go back on God we are going to suffer some serious consequences. Be mindful of it. Remember not to forget God. Israel was told after the walls of Jericho came down, there were some instructions given. The accosting, leave it. Achan got greedy and he took. The long and short is, Achan caused Israel defeat. And in the end, Achan and his entire family was torn to death. Your actions can bring some serious consequences. Let your actions bring you to a point when you will stand before God and you say, well done. And he would say, well done. Because God sees everything. God understands everything. God understands everything. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, he taught, well, boy, I could pull a little thing here, so I will get through. So he ran down the servant of the, 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 the man, Naaman. And he said, the master said, master, you say one thing. But not only that, that which you have received is not all that you are receiving. Because when he came back, the thing was, hey, you know what? 
that thing that, Achan, that, uh, that Naaman was freed of will now be yours forever. Brethren, think of what will come when we turn our backs on God. Don't make promises that you are not able to keep. Don't tell God, I will do this if you are not going to do it for him. Because hey, when God promises, God delivers. When you and I make promises, we need to keep them. Especially when it comes to the things of God. I watched a young man lying on his back some years ago. And he said, when we went and visited him, he said, well, boy, he used to call me Reds. He said, Reds? But when I come out of this, you know, I can put my life back in God's hands. You know, I can get everything organized. He's back on his feet today. But he has forgotten God. He has forgotten God. Brethren, the word of God says, surely, surely, we will surely perish. We will surely perish. I do not want to perish for being stupid. I don't want to perish for making a silly choice. I do not want to perish for doing something which is contrary to the will of God. So I am going to remember the Lord my God. I'm going to remember the journey over which he would have brought me. I'm going to remember his commandments, statutes, and his judgments. I am going to remember that it, is, that it is he who has given me the power to get wealth. And I'm going to give him the praise that is rightfully his. Because I don't want to suffer no consequence. I am greedy. I want to receive benefits. I want to receive the blessings. I want more of God. So I will attempt more for him. That I can receive more from him. Attempt more for almighty God. Attempt more for almighty God. Don't find excuses. Don't say I'm not able to. I can't do this. I don't have the time. God may just take away everything. Make yourselves available. And give to him what is rightfully his. Because you could be guaranteed. Benefits will follow. Benefits will follow. And I rather benefits. Because I want to lay down and enjoy my benefits. Rather than be walking, knocking my head here, there, and everywhere. Suffering consequences. Saints of God. Our God is faithful. He wants us to remain faithful to him as well. Our God is faithful. And all through the world we have seen his faithfulness being proven towards us. Faithful. Will you remain faithful to God this morning? Will you remember him? Will you remember him and give him all that is rightfully his? Stand with me this morning. Stand in God's presence. Will you be faithful to the end? Will you keep trusting him? Will you keep loving and serving him? Will you be totally dependent upon him? We serve an awesome God. We serve a big God. God who is strong. An almighty one. Hallelujah. God bless you. We are out of time. We have to stop there for today. But I trust that the word of God will have free course in your hearts. If we can be a further help to you, please get in touch with us and let us know. You can write to us at Direction PO Box 443 St. Vincent West Indies. You can also call us at 784-456-1636 or visit us online at streamsofpower.com. We look forward to hearing from you. So until next time, may God bless you richly.